Suppose that you've collected a bunch of data. Now what? The first question we'll ask is, how can you quickly and efficiently communicate the data? The answer is with a good visualization. First, let us consider some basic visualizations. We can initially turn to a visualization called a stem and leaf display. Throughout our discussions of statistics, and starting with this example, we'll be working with a few different data sets. Um, but the first one we're going to talk about is what I'll call in reference the large data set. So the numbers, there are 10 values in this data set. The numbers are 49, 55, 55, 64, 65, 68, 68, 69, 72, and 76. And we'll start by creating a stem and leaf display of this data. And the way a stem and leaf display works is we'll create the stem. And that's going to be, for this situation, it'll be the, the tens digits to all of our different data points. So we have values in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Those will be the four stems for this data set. And then to the right, we'll list all of the different leaves. In the 40s, we only have one value, 49, so we list the units value. In the 50s, we have two occurrences of 55, so we'll actually list two values of 5. Again, this isn't to represent 55, this is for 55 and 55, this is the ones digit. In the 60s, we have 64, 65, 68, 68, and 69, and in the 70s, we have a 72 and a 76. This is what we call a stem and leaf display. It's important to note that when we talk about these different visualizations, so we first talked about the stem and leaf display, um, these visualizations, some of them will work better than other visualizations, and it depends on your data set. So stem and leaf display worked really well for a large data set because we had both tens places and units digits. But for what if we considered a different data set? This is what we'll call our small data set that has only five values, 55578. Five, it would not be a really good data set to use if we wanted to create a stem and leaf display because they all have the same tens digit, namely a zero. And so they would all come from the same stem. So as we go through these different visualizations, we want to keep in mind the word good. We want to think about what is the best way to create a good visualization for our data sets. A second type of basic visualization is one that we're all fairly familiar with, but it's called typically a pie chart. And a pie chart um, is good when we're trying to talk about percentages of the whole. So let's do an example of what a pie chart might look like. Suppose we wanted to represent the percentage of, um, we'll do days of the week um, that are weekdays. And we'll compare that with um, days of the week on the weekend. So what percentage of the days are weekdays? Five of the seven days of the week are what we would call weekdays, and two-sevenths of days are what we call weekend days. So if I wanted to create a pie chart, I would first start with my pie and then break it up into seven segments. And when you do this by hand, it's not always the easiest thing to do. This is where a computer could definitely come to our aid. Um, and be able to create a much better visualization. But we'll roughly say that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slices. We'll say that they're equal enough. So I will take five of these seven slices and shade them in to represent the five sevenths that are weekdays. And two of these seven slices will be shaded in to represent the two sevenths of the days that are on the weekend. And so as we noted, Pie charts are useful if you're trying to talk about percentages of the whole. A third type of basic visualization that we'll talk about is what's called a line graph. And keep in mind again that line graphs are useful in some situations and for some data sets and not as useful for others. When are line graphs useful? They're useful when you want to track something over time. 
The fourth visualization that we will talk about in order to quickly and efficiently communicate our data is called a frequency histogram. And you've probably seen these before and may have called them by a different name. Sometimes they go by the name a bar chart. When creating a frequency histogram, ultimately, we want something that looks like the following. We're going to have a horizontal axis that will measure the value of our data. And the vertical axis will measure the frequency. And so we want to get something that looks like, you know, the following, where we have the value of the data and then the frequency of occurrences um, for that value. This type of bar chart or graphical visualization is called a histogram. Now in order to get from your data set and all of those values that you have to a histogram, it's useful to in the middle create what we call a table of frequency distributions. In order to create a table of frequency distributions, we're going to go back and use our familiar data set, this large data set, again, of the 10 values from 40, ranging from 49 up to 76. Here's how we create the table of frequency distributions. We'll have a few column headers. The first one is the outcome. The second column header will be the frequency. And so we can go down and list our various outcomes. Note that we have one occurrence of a 49. So my outcome 49 has a frequency of 1. My outcome of 55, on the other hand, occurs twice or has a frequency of 2. 64 occurs once. 65 occurs once. 68 occurs twice. 69 once, 72 has a frequency of 1, and 76 has also one occurrence, and so its frequency will be 1. We can add a third column to this, though, and that's called the relative frequency. In the relative frequency column, we're going to record the proportion of all of the data values that are this outcome right here. So 49, there's only one occurrence out of a total of 10 data points, and so the relative frequency will be 1 tenth in fractional representation or 0.1 in decimal notation. Since there are two occurrences of 55 out of a total of 10 data points, 2 tenths um, would be the relative frequency of the value 55 or 0.2. We can continue to fill in the remaining relative frequency values. One way to check whether or not this column of relative frequencies is correct is to add up all of the relative frequencies and make sure that the total is 1. All right, so now that we have the table of frequency distributions, we're able to use this information in order to create a frequency histogram. So we can begin. Remember that the horizontal axis will be the value of the data, and the vertical axis will represent the frequency. If we were to attempt to create a frequency histogram for this data set, we would start by creating a horizontal axis and saying, oh, we have a value of 49, and there's only one occurrence of 49. So We'll list our value of 49 and say that that is a height of 1. Our next value was a 55, and we had two of those. So I don't know. We'll put 55 right about here. And I'm going to make sure that I don't just have a height of 1, but I actually have a height of 2. And so I'll make sure to list on my vertical axis the frequency that I have 55 is actually 2. Now one thing to know, especially when creating these graphics by hand, is um, you might not be the best of artists, and so it might be hard to tell exactly what the frequency is. So I always encourage you to 
at the top of the frequency histogram list the total number of occurrences for that data value. All right, so we've got 49 or two occurrences of 55. What's next? Oh, one value of 64. Okay, so 64 is, if I tried to space it out, it looks like it might actually be all the way out here. And I only have one occurrence, so put that value and its frequency of one in. But from here, we can see that looking at individual data points isn't actually going to give us a good display of our data. And our goal in this video is to really talk about creating good visualizations of our data. So instead, we're going to create what is called a grouped frequency histogram for this data set. So in order to get around the problem of the fact that our data values are extremely spread out and it's not going to give us a great visualization, let's think about what groups might be a better option than considering the individual data point. We'll again consider and create a table of frequency distributions, but this time we're going to list groups for our outcomes. What groups make sense given our data set? Well, 40s, values in the 50s, values in the 60s, and values in the 70s. So we end up with the four groups that we see right there. Of our data set, how many of them were in the 40s? We can pull our data set back up. Um, we only had one value in the 40s. We had two values in the 50s. Five of them were in the 60s. And then we had uh, two values in the 70s. Again, we could complete a third column talking about the relative frequency um, to the entire data set. And so we would get um, 0.1, 0.2, 0.5 and point two for the relative frequencies of this data set. Now that we have our table of frequency distributions, let's go ahead and create what is called a grouped frequency histogram. So again, I'll create my two axes, my horizontal axis will again list the value of the data and the vertical axis lists the frequency or the number of times that value occurs. But again, we're going to be doing groups. So this time around, I'll let this represent the 40s, this area represent the 50s, this be the 60s, and this will represent all data values that fall into the 70s. So we noted that in the 40s, we only had one outcome, or there's a frequency of one here. So when I go ahead and create my bar above the 40s, the height here will be one. So I'm going to make sure that on my vertical axis, this tick mark right here is just for a height or an outcome uh, for one outcome. Um, in the 50s, we had two data values in the 50s. So this will have a height of two. Uh, the 60s, and we'll go ahead and make sure to mark that here, have a height, should have a height of five. So I'm going to try to space out um, my vertical axis to make it even units and five would put my height all the way up here for the total number of data values that occur in the 60s. Again, because I'm not the best of artists, I'm going to make sure to list um, the, to the frequency of the values in the 60s. And there were two occurrences in the 70s, so we'll go ahead and create that bar right there in the histogram. And this gives us what we call the grouped histogram of our data set. And so we're looking not at the individual data points, but more the overall group of what we have. Now we've only been using values from the frequency column. What about this whole relative frequency? Well, you could create a relative frequency histogram, but instead of listing the total number of outcomes, you would list the relative frequency. So this would be 0.2, this would be 0.1, and this would be 0.5. So we've seen four different ways to visualize data and create good visualizations. Um, and hopefully this will give you an idea of a way that we can quickly and efficiently communicate our data set.